up you guys i know i've been off for a bit i've been working on a whole bunch of projects i helped a friend of mine launch two businesses i launched one i've been doing again a whole bunch of other stuff but i wanted to come back to my video i'm now starting to get a bit more extra time so let's go about what i'm working on right now and yeah i hope you guys enjoy So I know a whole bunch of you were wanting to know how I made that shoe photo I recently did. So that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to go over the different mics I have set up, how I have them set up, how I create the shoes, post-processing a bit, and we'll get into that right now. So I basically have one light that's going to specifically target that back portion of the shoe. Um, and then I have a octabox that's kind of doing the main fill light for the whole shoe, and then I have this light right over on the bottom that's gonna take care of that background light gradient effect so let's go over how each of the individual shots are one lighting source at a time so you guys can see how they look i'm going to go ahead and start off um just with a background light so you guys can see how that one looks let me go ahead and so that's light number one that we have on um, so now let me show you guys how it looks using just the main light. So let me make that switch. And bear with me, the shoes are a bit dirty. I did use them. I am a triathlete. I could have resist not using them. So I broke them already. Oh, my camera, that's fine. So that's our, our main light, main key light, right? Um, and then let's go ahead and turn it over to this guy so you guys can see how that fill is going to affect right over by here. Um, so let me go ahead, turn that one off, and I use light A, and then always, especially in these cases when you're compositing more than one picture, you don't want to move the camera, so make sure if you're tethering to use the shutter here, or if you have a smart trigger, then that. And then that's our fill light. So now let's see how all three lights are going to work together. This is where it gets really cool. Um, and honestly, the, the way that I balance out the light um, to make the composition work, how you're going to see it now, background light should be a bit over because you want it to slightly overpower all the other lights so you can actually see that nice gradient effect that we're seeing right now. And then main key light, you don't want to overdo it. Um, I am working with a different camera. I sent over my D5 to, to get clean depth. So I'm working with my D610 and I also have a the regular 24 to 70. Yeah, so that's again a bit too bright. So you should get a play around with it until you find something that works for you. Different for everyone. No. Or if you have a client then you want to make sure you're you're shooting to your client standards. So let me just turn this to how it was. And then I'm gonna keep this at 7.1. And uh, that's basically all there is to it. You just have to, you know, go over all the lights and move them a bit. I just moved my main light a bit so I can cover that shadow on the right hand corner. I mean, I can raise the shadow a bit more. Yeah, that's way more like it now that you have the picture that you want ooh, that does look real good now that you have the picture that you like make sure that you remove all the items from your shot so i'm just gonna remove the shoes which of course you're not seeing <laughs> but just imagine me taking the shoes away and then let's redo that photo There you go. Light change in color. That's due to the red and the shoes. So that's something you can adjust. So now that you have these two shots, not really much else that you need to do. Let's go ahead and do the following. So what I like to do to process my shots, um, ideally you want to use the gray card. I don't have one, so I'm just going to use the side, the side of the shoe or this back portion where it evens 
out. You want to make sure red, greens, and blues are matching. My photographer mentor, awesome dude, he had super gray hair, so he would use his hair as a uh, gray card. Of course, I have black hair, so I won't be doing that. Let's go ahead and increase that. I, I like to put it black and white first, just so I can balance out the whites and everything, so you can push the whites a bit over. Yeah, that's good. Now let's increase the contrast. Start with 25. Um, clarity, we can boost that up. I might have used too much of that clarity, so I'm going to lower, lower that a bit. I can't exactly pinpoint the settings I used last time. This works fine for the purpose of the video. So let's go ahead and sync our background photo. Um, oh wait, let's go ahead and adjust this cropping too while we're at it. Um, I want to crop it not too tight, but around there. That works. So now let's go ahead and sync and make sure our cropping is there too. Uh, we didn't do any local brush adjustment. And there we go. So now, the second thing you want to do is you are going to export this guy over to your desktop because we're going to use him. Or her. <laughs> um, type this to video. Uh, make sure quality is up. It is. So let's hit export. And then we're going to right click this guy and edit in Photoshop which will take a minute to load. I just wanted to show you guys so you could see kind of on my end the space that I'm working with. Honestly, you can work with whichever space. I moved the shoes away just so I could take the blank picture. I just have flash point from a drama, uh, 8600 watt. I got one, two, and then the one for the background, set of the two, main light and of course uh, my d610 which is what i'm working with right now to hold the shoes you really all you need to to do is something that you know works i have a side snap which works fine to hold it and then i have a second this is kind of a a reflector arm to hold it the shoe fit perfectly on there so i just used it for that um, and then you want to make sure that you put fillers in your shoes just so they hold up, especially the label for the shoe. Quick tip is if you don't want to deal with the shoe laces, just put them on the inside how I did here and that way you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry too much about the, the camera stuff side of everything. Um, all you really need to worry about is composition, lighting, and you know, how you set up the lights. And after that, you know, your shot is gonna make itself. Okay, so we got Photoshop up and going. So we got our photo here. What we're gonna want to do is Command J. We're gonna duplicate that. And then uh, let's go ahead and bring that picture we exported. So let's go ahead and drag that photo over. We're gonna drop it. And then go ahead and scale it to fit. Uh, cool trigger to hit shift and then I'll snap to the grid hit enter you're gonna lower that picture behind so now you got the pictures right there so you're gonna want to create a, a mask um, so you're gonna click the layer mask and now you want to make sure it's highlighting you don't want to work with it here you want to make sure it's highlighting the white and then you're going to prompt your brush by pressing B. And then you want to make sure it's black. Whenever you are painting with black on that mask, anything that's under it, which in this case is the background photo we have, will show up. So this is what I mean. We're going to scale the brush black and opacity is OK. And then we're just going to paint it. And then of course, you wanna zoom in 
And let's make sure that our hardness is fairly up there. And you will see a slight difference in in, in tone, of course, but that all that we are going to adjust. So make sure it's about 87, that sounds about right. Um, and we're just gonna paint this to make sure we take all that out. Um, we can even zoom in a bit more. Another way is, of course, use the pen tool, but I really, it's gonna be a more efficient way to do it, for sure. I don't wanna go through the pen tool right now, <laughs> so I'm just gonna erase it, but definitely the pen tool would be the smartest way to go, especially in, oop, in this case. To see the, the thing about the brush, like I took out a good chunk of the shoe there, so scaling it down and then and there you go. Make sure you take away all those hard edges. And now let's do the same thing for here. So this guy's tricky, I mean it's not that tricky just because you can kind of see where it finishes, but Let's go and take away this portion slowly. Now scale that down. We are going to erase our hardness. And then you can more or less just have an idea of where this goes. I know my shoe specifically has a bit of a loop there. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Take away this. All right, and then if you press space. You'll have you'll prompt the hand tool, so that way you can move your oops, your your image and work around it. Um, so let's go ahead and work the hardness up. And work around here yeah that looks just about right if you press the forward slash you'll see where you're working so that way you know where you're where you've erased and where you haven't um so great great way to keep track of that uh, by pressing the forward button um and not what we're gonna do right now. So let's just see, I went over the shoe again. This is why the pencil is the way more efficient method of erasing this, but um, this is just for the sake of the uh, video. Unless you guys wanna see how I do the pencil, let me know down in the comments and then at that point I'm happy to go over it. So yeah, that's basically it. Now let's go through the back picture and that's something I would have done in Lightroom since it was going to be a bit easier, but you can adjust it here, the brightness to have a match. That matches pretty well. Then hit OK. All right, so now you removed successfully everything from, you know, the calf that we're holding on the shoes. Since we prompted the edit in Photoshop from Lightroom, you can choose save this, and then it's gonna automatically uh, save it into Lightroom. So that's another quick tip, so you don't have to export, import to Photoshop, and then save and import back to Lightroom. They're all connected, so you can just prompt the edit in Photoshop from Lightroom, or jump to Photoshop, you do your work, Command S, save it, and it'll automatically save back to your catalog. So no need to be exporting and re-importing. This is a way, a uh, more efficient way of going around that. Um, it's at 99%. Let's give it another a minute. So it is just saving. And there you go. So now if you go back to Lightroom and see the picture here just popped up. Full screen that. And there you guys have it. That is how I did the shoe photos. So I hope you guys enjoyed kind of the workflow of how I do the picture 
it's really an easy, simple procedure as long, you know, the biggest challenge in this is getting your shoes prompted up, getting your lighting set up, you know, the way it should. You don't need my exact same equipment. You can work with what you have. I'm a true believer of working with what you have. You don't need the best equipment. You don't need the higher end cameras. I'm working with a D610. It's an entry level, mid level DSLR. I'm recording with a D5100. I'm able to do the picture with that camera as well. Main main thing here is lighting your, your, your product, placing them well, and how you process the picture and how you want it to, to turn out. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna to try to keep up with my videos. I can't promise anything since I'm managing so much um, stuff on the side, but I'll do my best. And again, hope you enjoy, share. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And to those viewers who are coming from the product photography Facebook group, thank you so much. Uh, you guys actually motivated me to make the video. I was in between making it or not. So thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.